Welcome to Hull Tech Elite NSP Training Part 61. In this training module, we're going to be exploring setting up our flat shift feature for a sequential transmission in a closed loop type of system. So this is going to be a little bit different than the other two training tutorials where we've looked at setting up our flat shift. This is a bit specific. Let's jump in so we can check out how to set up this feature. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at setting up our flat shift feature using our Hull Tech Elite and our NSP software. Now, the focus of this tutorial is going to be setting up the closed loop option within our flat shift programming. This is very specific. It's going to be for a sequential transmission that's going to have a gear position sensor built into the transmission. That gear position sensor will send a certain voltage output to the Hull Tech, and we're going to configure that so we know exactly what gear we're going to be in. And we can utilize then the shift cut feature along with the strain gauge input to initiate our shift cut, all based on the actual gear position starting to change when we're making our shift happen and having this closed loop functionality. Now, this is going to assume that you have a load cell or strain gauge set up on your shifter lever or your shifter arm going into your transmission. With a sequential transmission for clutchless upshifts or downshifts, you definitely have to have that load cell or strain gauge. So the configuration and setup details here are similar to our last tutorial, but there are some differences. And I wanted to make this own dedicated tutorial on this topic because I have had other people ask with other engine management systems going through and trying to set up their sequential transmissions, how to go about this. So this is a little bit unique, a little bit specific with our elite system. So we'll have this dedicated tutorial on this topic. Let's jump in and take a look at first how we can set up a gear position sensor so we can track and detect our gear position. Now we know we can set up our gear ratio that's looking at RPM and speed relationship. We had a dedicated tutorial on that a little bit earlier in our training course. This is going to be this unique situation where we're not going to calculate the gear that we're in. We're actually going to know the gear from the gear position sensor. So let's jump in and take a look at this real quick. So I'm going to move here from my fuel tuning page and I'm going to go into our main area, go into our navigation area here. We're going to move down into our transmission section. Now in here, we have our gear detection type. We have to go and set this first before we turn on our flat shift feature for this closed loop functionality or else we'll get an error and it's not going to work right, not going to function right. So under the gear detection type, right now it's set to gear ratio. This is commonly what we use and we use if we go down here real quickly to briefly touch on this topic, we have our gear ratios, number of gears we have for the transmission. We set that right here. So the number of forward gears that sets it in our gear ratio chart. And then if we didn't have a gear position sensor, we would simply drive in a gear and go and hit calibrate. And that'll go and put this ratio value here. This is a lookup value for the hull tech to understand what specific gear we're going to be in. This is the most common way to set up gear ratio or gear detection with the Hull Tech. But when we have the sequential transmission and we want to use this closed loop option, it does require us to have a gear position sensor. So we're not going to be referencing our gear ratio chart here. What we're going to be doing here is going to gear detection type and we're going to go and set this on gear position sensor. There's all kinds of other options, gear switch, RPM drop, transmission control function, user, selector position, and CAN input. In this case, we'll be using gear position sensor to use this closed loop functionality for our shift cut feature. So now what we can find here is that gear detection wiring needs to be configured. Now, in this case, my transmission I'm dealing with has a zero to five volt gear position sensor that's fitted to the transmission case. It'll be outputting depending on what gear I'm in and where the barrel assembly is moving and uh, position for the gear that'll send a different voltage output. And that's going to be how we detect the actual gear position. We have to go and assign this analog voltage input in order to use this for our gear detection right here, gear detection position in our chart. We're going to look at here in a second. So I'm going to go to assign and in here we can find that we have a couple different options, AVI one, AVI three, AVI four, sync pulse input three. That's all available. If we're wiring in a gear position sensor, again, it's going to be a zero to five volt scale for the sensor output and we need to wire it to an analog voltage input. In this case, I've wired it to an analog voltage input three. We can see right now I'm in the neutral position for my gear selection, and we can see the voltage here is roughly 0.33 volt. This will be different for your transmission you're working with, but that is my actual neutral voltage output position for the gear position sensor I'm dealing with. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose this as my option, AVI three, I'm gonna click OK, and nothing further here needs to be done. We don't need to go and have a pull up enable. Let's go here and reboot the ECU. 
Now the next thing we need to do is jump into gear detection position. And here, what we're gonna find is we have all of the different gears we're gonna be finding here. So first through fifth, then we also have a neutral voltage. There is also a reverse voltage if your gear position sensor has the ability to output something for reverse functionality. Mine does, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna enable it. Now this is where we need to program some things. So our neutral voltage of where I'm actually in my neutral position on the transmission, that is something we need to go and note for this nominal voltage or the average voltage we're seeing. So what I'm gonna do right now is- Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.